In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we graciously thank you for every opportunity that you've allowed us to accomplish, including, oh Lord, the graces that we receive coming from you. All those things that we've prayed upon and all those things that we didn't pray upon, but you continuously and consistently provide for us, Lord. May our hearts be pointed in the right direction as our purpose be defined by your will. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, good evening. Sige, just a heads up for Wednesday, there will be definitely a quiz to for the class. So it depends on uh, how far are we going to finish for today's um, coverage, okay? But ideally, I hope we can finish enough so that we can uh, proceed with um, human relations in the part. Okay, so again, let me go and share ahead for this one. Oops, sorry. Okay. okay. Sige, which part did we end last time? Did we end article 4 or 5? Article so five 4. Also, so, article 5, acts uh, against the provisions of mandatory or prohibitive laws shall be void. So, in just a short note, this is actually very much um, common sense. Meaning to say when the law particularly prohibits it and you execute or provide uh, performance over it, then everything in consequence of it shall be considered as void. Unless, again, usually the law provides an exception. When in particular, a particular prohibitive act says that it can be ratified or in some ways it can be legitimized, then it is one of those ideals of which um, it can be permissive, granting there are circumstances surrounding its admission. Okay, so um, this is just a point of reflection. You need to understand the nature of the provision of the law. If the law states otherwise, then it is permissive. But if the law says that it's mandatory, meaning everyone is required regardless of rage, sex, or uh, any point of identification, then you have to obey it. By same reason that this is usually the, the popular legal maxim, dura lex sed lex, the law is the law. The law may be harsh, but it is the law. So, muna ang mga mabatian niya sa mga... Uh, very popular people. Yeah. Uh, uh, law is law. Okay. Not even understanding what the context of that would mean. All right. So there are discussions here. So there are different kinds of mandatory legislation. They are most likely penal in nature. And um, they correspond to a positive, something that you must provide or do. And then there is what we call prohibitive or a negative part wherein you should never perform something. There's a lot of provisions in, in our um, penal laws that really requires you to uh, define the particular act. Say for instance, the killing of one person to, uh, killing of one person to of another is considered as a, uh, what you call that? a negative legislation, meaning to say, if you perform that, definitely there's a penalty that corresponds to it. Um, what about something that you must do or else if you will not do it, then definitely there will be consequences. Uh, what I have in mind is under our um, National Internal Revenue Code, wherein citizens, especially corporations, are primarily required to file their income tax returns and the failure to do so would amount to a certain penalty. Okay, so positive act means that you are required to do it. 
negative act, there is a prohibition on your part to actually perform it. So generally, in order to be valid, the simple, um, this is the requirement the last time I remember discussing this. Kung may mga parinte ka mo da, say for instance, si tito mo, si tita mo, and sila ni tito Henry C, isang buhay pa siya, yeah, ba? kasi yung uh, uh, i-donate biyang imo nga, i-bandi nga property, and when they donate it, the requirement is that while they are still alive, they must execute it in a public instrument, meaning it has to be not duly notarized. If it is not duly notarized, then the donation becomes null and void. Or if they simply donated it through oral donation, there is what we call uh, uh, a nullity to that kind of form of donation by reason that the requirement under the civil code particularly describes that a donation inter vivos involving a piece of land or a parcel of land must be in a public instrument. And their failure to do so would mean that you would have acquired no real or better right than any other individual. So that's the requirement there. All right. So there are exceptions to this. Um, there are different provisions which may allow it. When the law makes the act not void, but merely voidable. All right. I think it's very important for you to understand. What's the difference between voidable and void? Do you have the concept? You understand voidable and void. Say okay. Anyone would like to volunteer and provide us an enlightening? Oh, go ahead, Pat. Um, hello, attorney. Am I audible? I cannot hear you. Or ako si ako lang hindi ko mabati ang self ko. Ara na. Ara na. Okay. Sige, go. Um, I think uh, voidable means that pwede siya makonsider but pwede pa siya i- uh, valid siya but pwede pa siya i-consider as invalid if may ara something kasi nga invalid siya. Okay. But in any case, it's uh, it's valid pero pwede uh, May ara something na makakos siya to be void. <laughs> ano na siya? Sa void of na siya, no? Uh -uh. <laughs> okay. Sige. Uh, to simplify it, she is correct. Um, the difference between void and voidable has to be uh, in this nature. When you say void, it creates no legal effect. Meaning to say it is a nullity or it's nullified. Meaning you've performed something that is inherently wrong, thereby it cannot produce any legal effect. Whereas in avoidable nature of a contract, you may have deviated from a certain grounds over such conduct. Therefore, it is technically void, but it may be Kung ang term na the, for it to become really valid, it may be what we call ratified. Okay, Ratification is one of those means for which it becomes valid. So voidable meaning it is valid until it is being annulled. So if someone invokes that one, that particular contract entered into, we're just talking about... Uh, um, the nature of void and voidable huh? so that you can be familiar with. So enhancing your knowledge that when you're talking about void, it will never become valid. Instances that you would consider as void. Um, entering into a contract wherein it is against the pro provision under uh, the family code. Say for instance, Article 35. Can you go and check your family code under Article 35? Check Article 35. Uh, here. Let me show you Article 35. Wait. Here. Wait. Uh, Article 35 of your family code. 
Article 35 states the following marriage shall be void from the very beginning. We're just going in advance, ha? So that you can know. Those contracted by any party below 18 years of age. Ladies and gentlemen, if you contract your marriage below 18 years of age, even if may ara pa siya consent sa mga parents, the law will definitely consider it as void. Sir, pwede na iya sa sir nga nang nagpasugot man to talaga kung yung mga ginikanan, the provision states there, even if there is consent. Therefore, being made aware, void and voidable marriages under chapter 3 of the Family Code is going to give you the clear definition that if you have performed any of these things enumerated therein, it will definitely be a nullity, meaning it will not create the effect of marriage, it will not give you the benefit of marriage. But there are instances of which um, if we jump into voidable marriage, what would be this instance of voidable marriage? Um, to be more specific, let's jump with uh, here. 30, ano na Okay, ang um, chapter 3 daan, it's going to tell you what are void marriages. Void marriages by reason that it there is an absence of the essential requisites or the absence of the formal requisites. And there are void marriages by reason that by reason that it is against public policy. So there's a pro prohibition under 45 here. Under Article 45, marriages may be annulled for any of the following causes that the party in whose behalf it sought to have marriage annulled within 18 years of age but over below 21 solemnized without a parental consent. So uh, just to recap, the minimum age requirement for you to get married in this country is 18 years of age. But it doesn't mean that there are no additional requirements. If you are 18 years old to 21 years old, there is a requirement that you seek parental consent. Okay? Parental consent is needed. Above 21 years old to 25 years old, there is a need for parental advice. Okay? So, meaning to say, if there is a defect, you're 18 years old, but apparently you were not able to get the parental consent. By this reason, you can that can be considered as voidable by the sheer reason that you've reached the minimum requirement of 18. It's just that there is a formal requisite, which is the parental consent that you were not able to secure. Therefore, that marriage is technically void, but, but our law will look at it as valid until someone will invoke that that can be nullified. Okay. So valid ya po ng inyong kasal maski wala ka sang parental parental consent. Alright? But pwede mo na siya mapaanal. You have a marriage annulled was eight. Okay? Pwede niyo na siya mapaanal by this reason that you have not acquired that particular parental consent. So this is again one of those nature that forms under voidable marriages. Meaning it is valid. So kung if you live together and then you're so happy and blissful about your married life, despite without even um, compliance with such, then you can still continue and uh, honor the the existence of your marriage. Okay, so let's move back here. Moving back, there these instances of mandatory and um, prohibitive laws produce, again, void effects or nullified effects. It means it creates no effect whatsoever. Okay, um, 
there are a lot of examples here when the law itself makes certain acts valid, although generally they would have been void. Um, high ally, horse races, sweepstakes, these are technically games of chance which are by in itself are prohibited, but by sheer reason of legislative fiat, they have acquired lawful status because of the economic value that it reaches to. So if the law in itself would render it valid, despite, despite if you look at it in our cultural sense, gambling is uh, against our public morals, but because the law has declared it to be uh, legally existing, then it can proceed uh, as is. Okay, let's go to something more important. Here, rights. Rights may be waived unless the waiver is contrary to, please memorize this, huh? law, public order, public policy, morals, good customs, and prejudicial to a third person with a right recognized under the law. So the general rule is that laws can be waived, meaning laws can be particularly, I'm sorry, rights can be waived. Laws that grants you your right are substantive laws, okay, as a review and in particular. Now, the rights that you possess are in effect considered to be what? Waivable. But first, let us define what is a right. What is a right? Before anything else, the right is defined as something which can either be a power or a privilege given to one person who can ask and demand it from another. Okay? So the power or privilege given to one person. Meaning to say, say for instance, if I have the right to, as a child, I have the right to be supported by my parents. And if my parent, say for instance, my father has already abandoned us and is no longer supporting us, I can go to court and sue my father and ask for support. That's a normal, typical thing that you can ask during uh, instances of which there are abandonments or um, your parent, whichever, it may, it may be the father or the mother, who is, no who is not providing for his or her duty to provide the support. Why? This is the interplay of our law. If there is a corresponding right, the people around you must respect that right. But apart from that, the people around you may be particularly designated with a task, and that is duty. A particular duty over one person is something that you can ask and demand for. Uh, I remember one student before, um, that that student was very much desperate because who's gonna send her to law school and all of that. So naman ko at ni, pwede ko na demand sa ako niya father who is already who already has a family of his own to support me for my law school. And uh, outright, I told that student na if you've reached the age of 18 years old, then there is no longer a correlative obligation on your parent to support you because you've already reached the age of majority and technically you have been emancipated. So the age of emancipation in our country is 18 years old. What does it mean when you have been emancipated? Meaning to say your parents no longer exercise parental authority over you. You can validly enter into contracts on your own volition without need of consultation or without need of approval from your parents. But the problem is this. There is an extension in the provision in our family code which allows your parents, or not which allows your parents, which allows you to demand from your parents to finish a certain degree or vocation. And they will have to support you. So I was 
particularly um, telling this student nga kung may gusto ka nga mag-proceed ka sa law school, skwila ka anay, first year, first sem. Once nga ka nakaskwila ka, you can then have a preferential right and demand that your parent, whoever it is, should support you until you finish this vocation or this degree. Ha, muna siya, attorney. Uh, I never heard from her ever again. So I, I do not know if uh, she was able to. But uh, I, I'm not particularly sure kung nakaproceed din man siya or wala. All right. So again, please be mindful of how would you define a right. A right is either a power granted to you by law or it could be a privilege granted to you. But the sole purpose here is that you can demand for another person to respect your right. Now, this is where cases in the in our country would usually prevail. If one person did not respect your right, then usually you can sue them if they did not respect your right. That's one of the elements for a cause of action or a cause to bring a litigation to the courts. Now, rights may be what? Rights may be either personal or they are real. Real rights such as use in re or use in rem, they are enforceable against the world and the whole world. Meaning to say, this is the nature of a right. If I own this particular uh, pen, I can enforce it against the whole world, meaning I can exclude other people from its use. I can actually claim it if somebody took it from me. So meaning to say, I have the right of ownership and possession over this particular thing. It may not just be a ball pen. It may be land. It may be a car. It may be some other property of which you have legitimate ownership over it. Now, if somebody took it from you, you can institute an action to reclaim whatever it is that was taken away from you or was stolen from you. That is a right that you can enforce against the world. Sino pa man na siya nga Poncho Pilato ang nagkuha sa imo nga property, kagina nga tao, maski ano pa na ang posisyon niya, you can actually vest and give him uh, a legal action of which you can enforce. Meaning, ipatuman mo lang yung uh, against the world. Do ka uh, timing na kong Valentine's. No? You and me against the world. My love for you is yous and rem. You and me against the world. So, anyone against my own interest over this, I can enforce my right. I can exclude you. I can, uh, well, I can eventually uh, just simply claim if you are going to get this, I can actually enforce that. Real rights. The other right in particular is personal rights or used in personam or use ad rem. Meaning to say, you only, you only have a particular, particular right to enforce against an individual. Personal right. Say for instance, the one I exa example I gave you earlier. You have personal rights as to ask for support for your parents. Okay? You have the right to be supported. Pero kung isumo niya, si Henry C., si Manny Villar, si Manny Pacquiao, kung sino pa na ang mga bilyonaryo sa Pilipinas, ano man niya ang kalabot-labot na nila? Because they do not have any vested duty to support you. But you have a particular vested right against a particular individual, which is your parents or the, dis, the ascendants of your parents. Yan. Say for instance, si papa mo, wala kakabalo nga si papa mo, parente siya gali ni Jaime Zubel de Ayala. Siya ang nawawalang anak ni Don Jaime Zubel, the Teresa and then palayo lang si papa mo uh, tungod kay 
na inet siya sa pamilya niya, wala siya nagpakilala. And then eventually, no, katayla siya again man, when your when that your father passed away, you found out that your father has an inheritance of worth 100 million. Oh. Then you claim, I am the heir of your son. So in successional rights, if the child has predeceased the parents, ang iyang rights will be transferred to his heirs or sa iyang mga descendants. And that is you. So you can particularly invoke your right against this particular person so that it will be protected. Okay, this is the interplay of civil law and it's so beautiful because number one, it gets to kumbaga, it gets to define what is the duty of other people to you. And also sometimes it gets to define your duty to other people. So I hope this is clear when we're talking about right. It is something that you can invoke, demand from another because it is a power or an entitlement or a privilege granted to you by law. Okay? So, please also note that the subjects that are involved here can be an active subject, a person who is entitled to, and the passive subject who is a person who is obliged to suffer the enforcement of that right. Okay? Waiver. What do you speak when we what, what do we understand and speak about waiver? When we're speaking about waiver, it is the relinquishment of that known right. Meaning, balanda, baidat, di ba? Duka mo na. Say for instance, my area particularly and in reality, I have, I I know people. Kasi mita na yung pautang ako da biya na ibe. Pautang ako da cinquenta pesos. Sa dason, shina. Sa dason, 500. Sa dason, load, load. Gcash na beef. For what yan ay Gcash. Kay hindi ko kataya sa akong niya. Ano yung mga TVPs na ginatayaan niyo online. O sabong. Hindi ko kataya sabong. Hindi mo na sabong. Kasi niyo. Na, o si mama mo, o si papa mo. Uh, day, load di ba yan ay akong uh, cellphone. Uh, and then, Pambal sila binga. Ay wala ko di may kabayad gali sa si imo kaging hulam ang naghulam si imo mambal. Way ko di kwarta mambal kana. Ah sige, bay na lang to. Ah. That is a relinquishment on your right to actually ask for its enforcement. So take note that when there is a waiver, it has to be intentional and voluntary. It has to be in this particular um uh set we're in when you are trying to waive your right. Can't you demo ang waiver? Ah. Meaning to say, pabay, and you na lang to. Wala na to. Uh, stop na to. So, th this is in particularly uh, for your own understanding that when you're constituting a waiver, there must be that these following requisites. Okay? Here are the requisites for a valid waiver. A valid waiver must require that the person who is waiving it has a capacity to waive it. You are capacitated to waive. A minor is not allowed to waive his right because they are not capacitated. Much so if one is non mentis or he is an insane person. Say so for instance, sila ni mama mo, ginaway ka mo da. Ma, ano ginaba lang gusto mo kay si mama mo be? Uh, she's always nagging you. Or your parents always nagging you. Balon mo, mag-inaway, nagig ka mo kay wala niya ka ginapasultan maglagaw. Oh, kay te, gusto mo, hindi ka mag-quarantine and all. Ah, bala na ka mo da. I-wave ko na ang akon ng inheritance. I-wave ko na ang akon ng sus on your part you're the one who's trying to waive it but please take note if you're a minor you cannot waive it okay as a minor you cannot waive that right 
So the second requirement is that first requirement, you must uh, the person waving must be capacitated. Okay, there must be capacity on the person making the wave. The second one is that the waiver must be clearly made, but it doesn't have to be expressed, meaning it must be in a particular form and it must be definite that you are waving something. Okay, that's self-explanatory. Next question is, the person waving must actually have the right in trying to renounce or to relinquish the right. Let's go back to that example. Ging wave mong imo inheritance. But please take note. Butang tabi nga hindi ka na minor. 18 years old ka na and above. You're trying to state, I am waiving my right to inherit from this family. I no longer want to become a Zobel de Ayala. I no longer want to become a Villar. I no longer want to become uh, an heir to the Henry C. Ano nga yung pelido ni Soyeon Jin sa Crash Landing? Basta di ba may empire to sila. So he's trying to waive everything, he's right. But please take note that that right must actually exist. There is a difference here because you cannot waive that is something that you do not have. If inheritance is not given to you yet, you do not have anything to waive from the very start. Why? Because that is only inchoate. Inchoate meaning expectancy. That's not an actual thing that you possess, but it's a mere expectancy. So the mere expectancy is something that you cannot in particular waive because you do not possess the right yet. Kultun mo, anay, mapatay kung sino na daang ma-relinquish ang property sa iyo mo. Kultun mo, anay, sila mag-demise so that before mo na siya i-wave. Kung hindi mo na sila, Katie, ga-expect ka pa lang eh. Please take note that under our laws, um, inheritance becomes vested only at the point of death. Meaning to say that while your ascendance, I mean, duka, sorry to say that's the morbid, but while your parents are still living, you do not have an ounce of right to claim that these things are yours because your right will only arise from the moment that they have demised or they are demised. And that's the, the sad reality. That's the general rule, ha? Unless they have executed uh, donation inter vivos or donation during their lifetime, then you have particular rights over it. But say, for instance, there is nothing there that they have executed. You're just simply possess. Uh, you're just simply enjoying and assuming that uh, kung wala na sila tayo, simply sa imo malaki makadtong tanan. Tayo kulat ka na yung wala sila eh. Oh, that's that's the sad reality. But of course, you cannot waive something that you do not actually have, and that is the third requirement, and that's very much essential. The fourth one is that in certain instances, the waiver express in favor of the waiver must comply with certain formalities. Formalities, meaning to say it has to be in a certain format. It has to be in writing. Kung mag-wave ka sang write mo, there are particular things that in order to be valid, it has to be in a particular form. Waiver of your right when you have done it orally may be valid to certain transactions. But in other transactions, it would be required that you provide it in writing. Others, they are not satisfied that it is in writing. It has to be in writing and you have to register it. Well, others would not require it to be registered, but it has to be in a public instrument. Just like the earlier ones, mag-donate ka property, dapat it should be a donation made in writing and in a public instrument. So those are some of the requirements. And then the last one is that the thing that I was speaking earlier, it should not be against law, morals, public policy, and 
public order or your good customs and those to which they will prejudice the rights recognized by law. Okay. Say for instance on this. Um, when you are waiving something against the law, uh, in the law of succession, just like the example earlier, you are waiving your right you are waiving your right to uh, ah, eto, eto, eto na lang. Gina wave mo ang right mo in favor of your paramour or your kabit. And kung baga, hindi na ko magbaton sa 100 million, i-favor na lang yun niya sa akon nga kabit. So, pabayan mo yung mga legal wife and yung mga children. That becomes not only against the law but against moral. Okay? Other instances, a waiver of your right, preferential right, say for instance, um, would be considered as against good customs is uh, when you waive your right, you have, you have particular descendants who are who are expecting to also uh, inherit from you that is a prohibition under the law so that can be a waiver with prejudice to the rights recognized by third person say for instance amunia si pedro ging utangan ni juan okay si pedro si juan Si Pedro ang nagpautang, si Juan ang debtor, si Juan ang nangutang. Okay. Ini si Pedro may gingutangan man siya. Butang tang gingutangan niya si Ana, babae, ni for the si Ana. Yung illustrations ko man. Yung are. Nandiyan ako sa malay. Okay. Butang ta. Again, si Pedro, nagpautang siya kay Juan. Si Juan, may utang kay Pedro. Butang ta, 1 million. Si Juan naman niya, may ging utangan ng isa pa katao. Ngalan niya si Ethel. Ethel Casino. Sa casino ni Ethel. Nagutang siya kay Ethel almost like around 5 million. Okay? Si Ethel has already instituted an action against Juan nga kolektahon ang mga assets ni Juan. Including na mga salakyan, mga balay, kag ang mga tao nga nakautang kay Juan. Okay? So sini si Pedro ang hung may utang kay Juan hindi pwede i-wave ni Juan ang utang ni Pedro because it will prejudice the right of ethyl casino alcohol. Okay? So that's one of the examples of which waiver may not be valid by reason of prejudicial to the rights recognized by law. Oh, so magamit ang casino. Alright. So I hope that's clear for you. So examples that the rights cannot be renounced, there are a lot to bear. So natural rights such as the right to life, you cannot waive those. Okay, that's why in this country we do not have euthanasia or we do not recognize suicide as a valid right for one to claim that I am waiving my right to life. Anyone who's trying to do that and ging pa notarize niya pa sa abogado, Ang abogado nga nagnotaryo sina will definitely be disbarred for gross ignorance of the law. You cannot waive your natural rights. Alleged rights which really do not yet exist. Alleged rights. That one I gave you in Article 2263. Future inheritance cannot be renounced because they are merely inchoate. Inchoate, it's spelled I-N-C-H-O-A-T-E. Inchoate. Oh. 
in Kuwait, it's a mere expectancy, future inheritance. It's You cannot waive that because they do not actually exist yet. So those which renunciation of which would infringe upon public policy. These are some of the examples. Um, the right to be heard in court cannot be announced in advance. Hence, this kind of confession of judgment cannot be allowed by the reason that it is against public policy. Why? court When you are pleading through an arraignment. Arraignment is a process of which the court determines whether you are invoking to be guilty or not guilty. Kung mag-invoke ka nga ikaw, uh, Mario, ikaw ginaparatangan nga ging patay mo si Maria. Ano ang mahambal mo? Guilty or not guilty? Mamba si Mario, guilty. Ging patay ko si Maria, kay nakita ko siya, nagahalokanay sila ni Pedro. Okay. Okay. So, in that instance, can it be possible that because Mario has already confessed, the judge will just execute a judgment that he is now guilty, therefore the punishment and penalty will be this equivalent? As a rule, it's not allowed because confession by judgment is not allowed by our court. Meaning what will happen? The court will continue to proceed with the hearing. But this time, the lawyers of Mario will be allowed to induce evidence to either justify his act or act, his acts may, uh, there might be some evidence to which it will lower down the penalty for uh, his punishment. Other provisions here, the waiver of right, legal right to repurchase a homestead, uh, that has been sold if the waiver is made in advance. Are, this one, the example is, kabalo ka mo na sa mga duta na da sa Don Salvador, binidikto. Of course, some say nyo na da, gakadto lang ka mo na da, kahit enjoy ka mo sa mga tugnaw, kape, sa waterfalls, all the scenery. Most of the landowners there are not permitted to sell that property because that is actually just a privilege granted to them as homesteaders or meaning ging awardan ka sa gobyerno nga tagaan ka da duta kay para istaran mo ikaw nga bilang isa ka beneficiaryo you are prohibited from selling that land now kung ikaw wala mo siya ging sell pero ging prenda mo siya, meaning you are trying to get a loan from a person or a bank, but you are using that land as a collateral or a security nga in cases nga hindi ka kabayad, hindi ka ka provide sang payment, butong mo nila or i-foreclose nila ang property, pero hindi mo na pwede nga magawad. That is not allowed. That is against public policy because technically the law has already granted vested right over the beneficiary of this particular homestead owner okay uh, other examples here the third one waiver in advance of a one month separation pay is contrary to public policy but it's not a waiver after the right has accrued so this one is more in labor law so there's a lot of examples that are against public policy that we can go. When the waiver is prejudicial to a third person with a right recognized by law. Um, here, the same example as I provided you. Say, say for instance, while an heir may renounce his present inheritance, uh, still if the uh, waiver will prejudice existing creditors, uh, may mga utangan niya, the latter can accept the inheritance in the name of the heir, but only to the extent of sufficiently to cover what is part of the utang. Okay. So yeah, let's try to move forward. Okay. Article 7. Article 7 is 
speaks about um, the ideas about laws. Laws are repealed only by subsequent ones and their violation or non-observance shall not be excused by disuse or custom or practice to the contrary. When the courts declare a law to be inconsistent with the constitution, the former shall be void and the latter shall govern. An administrative or executive acts, orders, and regulations shall be valid only when they are not contrary to the laws or constitution. The first paragraph tells you about how is a law change or how is a law being repealed? It can only be repealed if there is a new law. That's the subsequent law that exists. And if you violate and you do not observe them, just because this particular law is not being practiced, not being utilized, it's not being popular, it doesn't mean that you are not violating the law. That's, this is a declaration of public policy already. The second paragraph, the second paragraph is a discussion about the supremacy of our constitution. The supremacy of our constitution will always prevail above all other laws which are inconsistent to the provisions of the constitution. The supremacy of the constitution will always remain higher than any other laws being created. That's why if a law is declared inconsistent, it shall be considered void. Okay? Just like what we're being discussed right now with the anti-terror law. It claims that it's there are violations that are included in the... ATL or anti-terror law, which infringes our freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom to believe, freedom of religion, included in all of that, then we are waiting, we're awaiting that the, consti the, 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 the constitution prevails and the, the ATL will be declared unconstitutional. Therefore, they will be considered void and the constitution will always govern. The third one is that in the hierarchies of our laws, number one in our hierarchy is the constitution. Next are the laws. Masunod na lang na da ang mga administrative, executive, and other regulations. So if so long as they are not contrary to our law and constitution, they will become valid. That's why some of our lawmakers, they have what we call a provision or a repealing clause. Meaning to say, the format na nilang ilang law, as in kanam inami, isang pagsulat nilang ilang law. And then technically, under this certain paragraph, it is actually inconsistent with the public policy that is found under the constitution. How do they make sure that this one provision does not nullify the entire provision? They have what we call a repealing clause. The repealing clause would state therein that if there is some provisions here that are inconsistent or against the provisions of other laws or in the constitution, that inconsistency is deemed repealed subject that the rest that are valid shall not be affected okay because under your statutory construction supposed to be you take the law and as if it is in a whole part so the moment that there is one provision there that it's contrary and then there is no repealing clause then you will nullify the entire law but to remedy that, our uh, legislators always include at the bottom part the repealing clause, meaning to say that if there is some inconsistency, if it is contrary to our constitution and our law, what is considered inconsistent will just simply be nullified. And the rest that are actually effect effective and uh, consistent will continue. Okay, so here it's simply going to discuss the sources of law that we have 
it may be given under uh, the constitution, the laws. This is the hierarchy that we have. From the laws, we have administrative, executive, acts, orders, and regulations. So laws are being repealed either by express or implied. Express meaning there's a new law that actually is created to repeal the old law. Now, the anti-terror uh, anti law repeals the Human Security Act of 2007. The Human Security Act was then used as the basis for the implementation of acts of terrorism. But um, the anti-terror law expressly provides therein that it repeals the provisions found under the Human Security Act. Therefore, the Human Security Act is no longer existing or no longer valid. Impliedly, meaning if in so far as there are consistencies between the first law and the second law, the second law will always be prevalent. Why? Because the second law is the reflection of the latest legislative intent. So the first paragraph there states that subsequent ones are the ones that will always reign because the prior law has now been repealed. So long as you look at it as an implied repeal. Huh? When can you say that's in an re implied repeal? It's an implied repeal when it doesn't expressly provide for its uh, change, but you can see the consistency. Say for instance, um, ang pag-define ta sa uh, Human Security Act before, lain ang pag-define ta sa terrorism. Terrorism may be an act or any act concerted actions by a group or an individual, okay? Now, the anti-terror law has further defined and expanded it to actually claim that it could be not just by an individual, not just by a group of individual or other individuals to which they are being influenced about an act or a particular concerted conduct. Then you would note that um, it now has different appreciation. So just to look at it, an implied repeal requires that you need to, to examine the prior law and the subsequent law and see whether there is an incongruence or a difference between the two. Okay? So, so for instance, our own civil law has repealed the old laws that we have for the Spanish Civil Code. Um, provisions under the commercial law, sales, partnership agencies, deposits. Sang una, we have a code of commerce, but they have been repealed because these provisions on sales, partnership, agency, loan, deposit, they can be found in the Civil Code. So these provisions, the later provision, which is the Civil Code, will effectively be more uh, effect, uh, no, valid rather than the ones that were changed. Okay? So the rule of general and special laws. Actually, this is, uh, this is self-explanatory because if the general law was enacted prior to the special law and the latter, which is the special law, is considered the exception to the general law, meaning to say... Um, if this whole provision, if this is the whole context of the law, this is the general law, and then there is a particular subject or topic within inside it. So, say for instance, in concept, this is the general law. Inside of the general law is this particular content. The content may be, say for instance, um, marriages. Okay. Marriages. Marriages has been devotedly 
been redefined. Meaning to say, the, the special law will now be an exception to the general rule. Meaning to say, if we've defined marriages in different terms and in different contexts, then it will be the exception to the general rule. More particular definition is this. Under our civil code, we have a code of adoption. Uh, we have not a code. We have a law on adoption. On who will who can adopt and who can be adopted. But later on, we've enacted a law which is the domestic adoption law and the international adoption law. In the international adoption law, there is separate provisions wherein a foreigner can actually and validly adopt from the Philippines. In the general law, supposed to be, it requires three years ang foreigner nga mag-reside anay sa Philippines bago sila maka-adopt. But under the international domestic adopt, uh, un under the international adoption law, there is no need anymore for the three years requirement of residency. What is needed now is if they have a diplomatic relation, which is the national of that foreign foreigner, if they have with them a diplomatic relation to our country, then we can particularly allow them to adopt. Okay, so those are some rules that you need to understand. So if the general law was enacted, what if, naman ya, sir, there is a general law that was enacted after the special law? Um, the general rule is that a special law would still be effective unless the general law expressly declares the contrary. Meaning to say that the special law is now abrogated or the special law has been approved or updated by the general law. And there is a clear and necessary unreconcilable conflict. Okay. So these are some of the rules that you need to understand between general and special laws. Um, the rule of thumb is that there is a general law and there is a special law. Ang pamangkot, diin ang nauna. Nauna ba ang general law? Kung nauna ang general law, kag nag-abot ang special law, ang special law is the exception to the rule. Now, what if nauna ang special law? And then may nag-abot ang general law. Wala effect. General rule, the special law will still be valid. And the general law can operate in its own. But if the general law provides for certain criteria, such as nag-expressly declare siya that is different from the special law, if it is clear and necessarily unrecognizable, uh, unreconcilable, then there is now what we call an abrogation of the special law because the rule of all rules is that the latest law is the latest legislative intent, which is the main objective is to cure the defects of the previous legislation that was being given. So pinakaulihin nga laye would mostly be the latest recovery for all. All right, so it's 7.30. You still have classes, okay? So please continue to read. Read until Article 18. Um, read it in advance and, con uh, and contemplate with all other uh, topics. Yes, go ahead. Attorney, I would like to ask lang if you're going to post the recording sa canvas. Yeah, I will, I will. Okay, I'm from last um, week man as well. Yes. Okay, okay. The problem Thank is you. this. Um, I will only post the link because in Canvas, you're only allowed a certain number of gig. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to post it first on my YouTube account so that I can just simply let you get the link from the particular, ano niya siya tawag, na canvas nga link to open. Okay? 
So give me time, but I will post it definitely. So for you to follow. Okay? Nonetheless, nonetheless, there is no substitute for trying to read in advance and reading it ahead. Okay? All right. Okay, all right. Any other questions? Ano klase niyo gani after? American government. government. Si Miss Saibel niyo? Doc Chu. Ah, Doc Chu. Okay. Sige. With that, with no other questions, happy Valentine's. I hope you had a good Valentine day and uh, continue to be in love with the law. Right? Leave Jesus in our hearts. Forever. Forever. Thank you very much. Thank you, attorney. Thank you, attorney. Thank you, attorney. Goodbye. You can go. Hannah, you can go. John Paul, you can go. John Paul. Shara, you can go. John Paul, you can go. It signifies you are not listening in five, four, three, two. Ikaw ya, Mr. Libres. So that's a good reflection. Let it be written in memory that you are not listening. Okay.